Hey everybody, welcome back to Home Field Advantage Sports. Um, I'm still feeling a little under the weather today, but I'm feeling a lot better than I have been the past two days. Um, great series just happened between the Orioles and Rays. Um, that was tremendous baseball. It was something that kept me uh, feeling a little better while I was feeling down, I guess. Um, I've just felt like crap the past couple days, but that was amazing baseball to watch. Um, that... Look, great pitching by the Orioles in that series. I think, you know, the starters look like they're coming around a little bit. Um, even in the game that the Birds lost, I feel like, you know, 3 nothing. You know, you gave up three runs or less. You're in contention of the game. You know, the bats just need to wake up. But they were facing Shane McClanahan. You know, the Rays have great pitching all around as well. Um, probably the best in baseball, tampa based pitching. So, I feel like, you know, the Orioles played them very well. Um... That first game, I wasn't going to get too bent out of shape about because it was Shane McClanahan pitching, and he's he's hard to hit. I mean, he's, they're not an easy team to score runs against. And, you know, the next night, the Orioles, Gray Rod just turned in an amazing start for the Orioles. Um, he gave up two home runs, but they were both solo shots, so he limited who was on base. And that's all you can really do against a really good team like Tampa Bay. I mean, Tampa Bay has, what, like the second most home runs all time up to this point in the season. They're mashing the ball right now. And for the Orioles to hold them to 3-2 and then what was the score? 2-1 to one last night? I mean, that's you can't really ask for much more out of Orioles pitching. Um, with Felix, I feel like he's been a little shaky here recently, but he's still getting the job done. Um... He's still pitching really well. I feel like, you know, just a little bit more control, get back to his old form. I'd give him a little bit of time off. I feel like they're overusing him, honestly. Now, Yannier Cano, he's been tremendous up to this point in the season. So, I really like him in the role that he's in right now. Um, Felix, I just feel like he needs a little bit of rest. Um, I'm waiting to see Drew Rahm finally get to pitch at the Major League level. I'm hoping that he pitches against Pittsburgh at some point coming out of the bullpen because I'm excited to see his talent and how it transitions to the major league level. Um, Orioles have a lot of good ones in the minor leagues. He's one of the many, and I feel like you know he can contribute to this team right this moment. So I'm looking forward to seeing how he plays in Baltimore. Um, you know, there's just a lot of guys that they could call up right now, like D.L. Hall. You could even make an argument for, like, Vespi right now. Um, man, what's that one kid's name? Povich has been pitching really well. K. Povich. Um, he might be a little young yet, but I feel like, you know, he could make an impact at some point. Maybe this year. I mean, who knows? You know, they have a lot of options. Um Guys that, you know, you might not even consider to be ready at this moment. I mean, who thought Yenier Cano was going to come on right now and make this kind of breakthrough? So I feel like the Orioles are very deep in the pitching department right now. They have a lot of position player depth as well. I mean, when you have a guy as good as Joey Ortiz, and he's not even on your major league roster, that would indicate to me that they're pretty deep. And I feel like we're going to be seeing him again soon with the Urias injury and everything. Um... I'm glad that injury isn't more serious, but I have a feeling it's going to take longer than 15 days. So, Gunner will be playing a lot more third base. And you got Mateo, of course, and you got Frazier. But I feel like they're going to need to call up Joey Ortiz at some point. I think you see Stowers get sent back down here soon. Just because Stowers hasn't been hitting at the major league level. So, I don't know. I mean, that's just... And, like, look... I would rather see McKenna get sent down than Stowers. I want to see Stowers develop at the Major League level. But he's not hitting right now at the Major League level. McKenna's hitting this much more than him right now, which isn't saying much, but he is. And as much as, you know, I want to see other guys besides McKenna get a shot in the outfield, I feel like right now he's the best option besides Colton Cowser. But Mike Elias said Colton Cowser's not ready to graduate from AAA yet. So I'm kind of... I'm kind of not pressed for Cowser to get called up. Like I am, I want him to be on the team right now because I feel like he could have a huge impact on the Orioles right now. But if Elias says he's not ready, then I'm not waiting for him. So when he does get called up, maybe over the summer, sometime July, um, I'll be excited. And I wish it was right now, like I said, but 
If Elias says no, then the answer is no. So I feel like, you know, you got to kind of just deal with what we got right now, and that's Stowers and McKenna. And, you know, you can tell me in the comments who would you rather have on the team right now, Stowers or McKenna? Because I'm leaning McKenna, and that's just because he's been hitting more at the major league level. I mean, they've both shown that they can make tremendous defensive plays, but they can also gaff up easy plays. So... I think they're both about equal defensively. McKenna's a little bit faster, and he's been hitting the ball better. And I think the Orioles need another infielder that's not Ryan O'Hearn because Ryan O'Hearn isn't going to play short, second, or third in a pinch. You know, Joey Ortiz can. And I don't think they should send down O'Hearn right now. I think, you know, it's a decently valuable bat to have at the major league level with power. So I feel like you're going to see Ortiz again soon and see one of those two outfielders get sent down in my bets on Stowers. But all in all, I think the roster's pretty solid right now. I think it was a really good series against Tampa Bay. Really good series against Atlanta, too, even though they lost two out of three. Um, I feel like, you know, going three and three against, you know, the, arguably the two best teams in baseball shows that the Orioles are right there with them. And all the people saying that the Orioles are fake and pretenders and they're winning games they shouldn't, I got one message for you. Fuck you. <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to be filthy or anything, but I think the Orioles are for real. And the people that saying they aren't because they don't have pitching or they don't have this or that or whatever, you think they're not going to make a trade? You think they're not going to call somebody up? D.L. Hall could get called up and be an ace. You know, he looked amazing in that doubleheader. That he, he came in in the doubleheader against Detroit, had like seven strikeouts over three innings. All right, the Orioles end up losing that game or whatever. But D.L. Hall looks amazing, Okay. And he's looked amazing at AAA so far this season. I think he could come up and make, like, instant impact. Because he, he has a little bit of major league experience. He pitched some last season. So I feel like, you know, it's not it's not like he's coming up for the first time and he's going to be shaking in his boots. I feel like, you know, he could come in and give you some quality starts. I feel like Mike Elias, with the team being as competitive as they are this year, is going to pull the trigger at the trade deadline and land a big pitcher. I have high hopes for that this season. So, I don't know who it's going to be, but I, f I feel like the Orioles will shore up their rotation. And I feel like the guys that they have are getting stronger as the season progresses, too. So, you know, I don't feel like the Orioles are pretenders. So, anybody that's saying that, you know, not really F you. Like, I was... But, at the same time, F you. You know what I mean? Um, I think they're for real. And I think people like Buster Only and shit are just haters. So... I'm not worried about people that are talking smack on the Orioles right now. They're all going to see come September and October after the Orioles have a world beater summer. So I am looking forward to the Pirates series this weekend. Um, that bird bath out in left field, uh, that looks like a lot of fun. I'm not going to be able to go this Friday. Um, I'm looking to go to a game during the Angels series. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Trout and Otani play. Got to see him play last year. Definitely looking forward to seeing him play again this year. And, um, yeah, I feel like the Orioles, they should win two out of three versus Pittsburgh. They might even sweep them because I think the Orioles have better pitchers lined up in each of the three games. And against the Angels, I'm hoping for three out of four, but realistically two out of four. Um, but I'm hoping for three out of four. We played them well last year. Now I feel like we can play them well again this year. So I don't know. It should be exciting. Um, we've got an off night tonight. NFL schedule's dropping tonight. Um, I saw that the Chiefs are going to have, like, the Lions come play at Arrowhead for the first game of the season. So that should be really exciting. Um, I've seen a lot of rumors here so far. I know the Ravens are going to London, god damn it, to play Tennessee. Which, you know, at least they should beat the brakes off Tennessee and kind of avenge that last London game. That last London game I've tried to put out of my memory. But the NFL likes to remind me of it. Year after year, every time there's a London game, it'll be like, you know, they'll post highlights from previous London games on Twitter or whatever. I just never want to think about that game again. And, of course, we're going to have to hear about it a lot coming into this game this year. So, hopefully the Ravens just beat the shit out of Tennessee. And, you know, it'll be better than the last London game in 2017 because that was just fucking atrocious. And I've seen a couple other rumors about the Ravens' schedule. I see maybe... You know, December 25th, Christmas Christmas Day, but at nighttime. So Christmas Day night, uh, 8.30, again, at San Francisco. That would be tremendous. Um, 
that would be a fun game, but you know, the opportunity to ruin Christmas is there. Uh, you know, not really. Nothing could ruin Christmas, right? But the Ravens 49ers on Christmas would definitely be a late present. That would be a lot of fun. Um, I keep seeing that they're going to open the season against Houston in Baltimore. So that ought to be uh, interesting. Seeing C.J. Stroud come, I might even go to that game, honestly. Just because it'll be nice and warm outside still. Seen them play the Texans before, but when they had Deshaun Watson as their quarterback. I went to that game years ago, 2019, when the Ravens were really good, when the Texans came to Baltimore. And I think the Ravens beat them like 41-7. to It was like Lamar versus Deshaun Watson. It's when they still had DeAndre Hopkins. I thought it was going to be a better game than it was, but the Ravens absolutely steamrolled them. So that, that was a fun one. Um, and if they open up the season against Houston this year, I'd probably go. Um, I've seen, I mean, like the Jaguars are playing back-to-back -back games in London this year. I mean, there's been a couple like leaks so far, but nothing solid until tonight. So we'll have to go over the schedule on here and see what's going on. I'll definitely break down the Ravens entire schedule and tell you if I think it's win or loss because I love doing that kind of shit. Um, NBA has been crazy, just like you'd expect, right? Um, Nuggets got a 3-2 lead on the Suns. If the Nuggets can pull out the series, I would definitely be looking at Denver to maybe get to the finals. It seems like... I, it seemed like, to me, the NBA was pushing for a Lakers-Celtics thing. But I feel like... I don't know. I feel like the Warriors are going to come back. I just feel like the writing's on the wall for that. I mean, it's a 3-2 series now. It was 3-1. The 73-9 and Warriors blew a 3-1 lead to LeBron in 2016. LeBron's like 17-0 all the time when he's up 3-1. I don't know. I feel like the Warriors... You know, what, game six is in, it's in L.A., isn't it? So they'd have to win a tough one at L.A., but they'd get a game seven at home. So it would be, it would be an interesting, um, it would be interesting to see how it unfolds if they can pull off the game six win. Uh, I feel like Denver is going to win the series against Phoenix. I feel like they've outplayed them the whole series. Um, it might go seven games. Denver hasn't lost a home game in that series yet, so I feel like Denver definitely has the edge in that series. Um, looks like Philadelphia might beat Boston, but I would never count the Celtics out, and I would never count out the Sixers' ability to choke. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing Denver play Philadelphia in the finals. Would Embiid sit out every game of the finals because he's scared to play Jokic? I don't know. He did sit out earlier this season against him, and he's, he has no excuse now, so that would be interesting. Um, Stanley Cup playoffs are going crazy still. I think Florida's out to the, it's a 3-1 lead now, but they jumped out to a 3-0 lead over Toronto. Uh, that Edmonton-Vegas uh, series has been pretty exciting so far. I mean, NHL playoffs are always fun. So, I don't know, man. There's just a lot of exciting stuff going on right now. Um, even with the NFL being in kind of like its dormant season. The NFL's never dormant, but, you know, they're not playing games right now. But we just had the draft, the schedule's dropping, and workouts are starting. So, it's it's starting to ramp up a little bit. So, you know, baseball is starting to hit. It's, it hasn't, it's like out of April now. So, I feel like, you know, that first month of baseball... After you get past that, it starts getting good, like in the May, June, July, leading up to the All-Star break. I love that time of year for baseball. Um, get playoff season in basketball and the NHL. So it's just a lot of fun right now. There's a lot to watch and a lot to talk about. So I'm going to sign off here for today. Um, I need to go get a drink. My throat's killing me. But it was nice to be able to do a video again. Um, thanks for watching. I really appreciate you all. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for my crazy Orioles takes every day. And like, comment, and subscribe. Definitely like this video. Comment and let me know who you think the Ravens are going to end up playing week one or how the Orioles are doing right now, pulling two out of three away from the Rays and all that good stuff. Would definitely be appreciated. So let's get the ball rolling, baby. Get some comments and let's get a discussion going. Peace out. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.